Hey, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in to the Impact Lounge Explosion Review. You have myself, Ro the Great, giving you a recap of the show. First and foremost, if this is your first time listening, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give a like, drop a comment. Also, be sure to check out the other content on the channel. There's reviews and interviews and much more. So be sure to check those things out. So then getting into the show this week, our featured match is El Hio Del Fantasma versus Braxton Sutter. And man, must I say, this was a great match by Explosion Standards. Honestly, this is something that I think we could have seen on Impact. And what made it great is, I want to say by far, this, at least in my opinion, was Braxton Sutter's best showing in his Impact tenure. Obviously, he's no longer with the company. But yeah, you know, it, it's a shame because I feel what he displayed in this match there was a place for him in impact and i think maybe he was just miscasted you know for a long time with all the changes and whatnot and finally when they seemed to have found something for him you know it was somewhat comedy you know he wasn't really kind of getting that opportunity to showcase what he can do and then obviously with phantasma you know phantasma i, I want to say management is high on him you know they haven't really pulled the trigger yet i would i thought by now he'd probably you know hold some sort of gold whether it was the tag or the exhibition championship it remains to be seen but uh you know phantasma gets to win excellent back and forth match you know phantasma was able to get his stuff in and get the win with the thrill of the kill which i gotta say is a sick finisher and i like phantasma you know with these partnerships i've stated and stated on the impact review as well but i think phantasma and ishimori are, have been guys that have really been given a chance to shine so if impact were to put titles on them which obviously they did with ishimori with the x division championship um you know I, there's there's no there was no problem with it because you know these guys are guys that they have really invested in and showcased very well so then next we get our around the ring segment which is moose and obviously josh matthews josh matthews and all of these and um, I want to say these, this one was one of the weaker ones by far. Um, Moose has been on around the ring before, so he wasn't get, really giving too much. I guess the biggest takeaway was how he got his Moose name, which he got from former Atlanta Falcons quarterback, Michael Vick. Um, but yeah, like I said, there wasn't really too much. I wasn't really too interested in it. You know, I preferred when they had around the ring with Sammy Callahan and Dave Chris because I felt like you really kind of got uh, in depth of who they are, where they came from, and kind of outside their character, their interest, interests, and whatnot. And I think that stuff is kind of cool at times, especially in Sammy Callahan's case, because they were talking about, you know, the origin of the whole hacking. You know, if familiar with the OVE backstage uh, vignettes where they're recording things. You know, it was you know talking about as far as Callahan's interest in that. So, yeah, I just found this one kind of weak this week. Then for our Impact Classic match, we get TNA's Final Resolution 2008, and our matchup is Kurt Angle versus Rhino. Now, the implications of this match is if Kurt Angle loses, he's gone from TNA, and if he wins, he gets a match with Jeff Jarrett at Genesis. Um, as far as the match, um, and I'll just give a, a, a quick uh, history. Um, during this time, the commentary is Don West and Mike TNA, which I think was the best commentary team the company has had. You know, not to dwell so much on the old stuff, but I really loved Don West. I felt like he was passionate on the mic. Um, but as far as, you know, during this time, you had the main event Mafia versus the TNA Frontline. And TNA Frontline was pretty much everyone who wasn't in the main event Mafia. Um, and then as far as you had Kurt Angle feuding with Jeff Jarrett for reasons I I I don't I don't know if during this time it was um Karen was with Jeff or I don't know it, I I really didn't like the feud just because I don't like feuds that are that have to do with personal life but you know during this time you know the booking was kind of eh. but anyways to the match um, you had Mick Foley being the special ring enforcer to ensure that nobody was going to interrupt and interfere in the match. Okay. 
um, the match was just, eh, it was very, really boring. I mean, Kurt Angle, usually the, the tell of the tape on Kurt Angle is, you know, he can make anybody look good, but it wasn't working in this match with Rhino. The ending came where, you know, typical TNA fashion, you get the ref bump and then Mick Foley comes in and he's playing de facto referee. He tries to give the fast count for Rhino. Al Snow of all, all people comes out and he slaps Mick Foley, which leads Mick Foley to go out of the ring and confront Al Snow. Kurt, Kurt Angle runs, gets a chair, hits Rhino with the chair, hits the angle slam, gets the three count. So Kurt Angle, you know, gets to remain in TNA and gets to face Jeff Jarrett at the next pay-per-view. You know, when you have these loser leaves the company matches, I think with wrestling fans nowadays, and I guess it's kind of unfortunate, but we're so in tune of what's going on at times to a fault where we kind of already know, unless it's somebody that we already know ahead of time has asked for the release or, you know, retiring or whatever the case may be we kind of have an indication of how the match is going to go and i'm pretty sure you know when you see oh well if kurt angle loses he he's uh going to be uh, he's no longer to be with the company you know that's not going to happen so i kind of wish moving forward or this day and age they were more creative with it like you know use it as a way to maybe repackage a character or or anything you know don't be so predictable but yeah, if you want to catch that match, I mean, obviously you can catch it in its full entirety on this episode as well as the GWN app. Then lastly, we get our Impact Rewind of the Week, which was Eli Drake challenging Pentagon Jr. for the Impact World Championship. Um, it was a short match for those of you who might have not caught it when it originally aired. Um, and I, I, I don't want to get too much into it because I know I ran it where we reviewed this match you know my only thing was i think a match of this caliber with these participants is something that kind of could have went on longer and i just didn't understand what was the whole point of having eli cash in let alone having eli take the briefcase off of moose if this was the end game just didn't make much sense to me but yeah um that's pretty much it that's the explosion root review for this week thanks for tuning in until next time you guys take care